Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you were to ask the average person on a street to name a famous telescope, I think the Hubble Space Telescope would very likely be the one at the top of everyone's list. Launched in 1990, it has become a, an essential part of the astronomy world. It's not the biggest telescope by any means, and ground-based instruments have certainly improved upon its light gathering and angular resolution, but no Earth-based instrument can produce such clear imagery across such a wide segment of the electromagnetic spectrum. Since launch, uh, there's been something like 15,000 academic papers published using Hubble data. So the fact that it entered safe mode on Friday is a big deal. It would be tragic to lose this instrument. It entered safe mode because one of three gyroscopes failed. And then when they tried to bring up one other gyroscope, they unfortunately found that it wasn't generating the quality of data that they would need. Gyroscopes are used to sense the rate of rotation of the spacecraft and they're kind of a core part of the system that controls the pointing of the telescope. And accurate pointing is pretty important with a telescope because it has to stay uh, pointed at the same object with very high precision for about half an hour to correctly expose uh, some of the instruments. The Hubble Space Telescope uses reaction wheels to actually rotate and control the orientation. And then on top of that, it will have a set of magnet horkers to help desaturate the reaction wheels over time. It doesn't have any thrusters or anything like that because that could potentially contaminate scientific instruments and that would be detrimental to the mission. Anyway, because it's in space and orients itself in three-dimensional space, it needs three gyroscopes. So being left with only two working gyroscopes is a big problem. With only two working gyroscopes, there will be some subset of rotations which can no longer be sensed by this system. The good news is that the gyroscopes are only one of several independent systems that sense the orientation of the spacecraft. There is a set of magnetic sensors that actually determine orientation relative to the Earth's magnetic field. Obviously, these also have to subtract out any expected uh, fields generated by the magnetorkers. There's also a set of coarse sun sensors, and they are just looking to see where the sun is, because if the telescope were to turn too close to the sun, within about 50 degrees, I believe, then the sun would start shining down the barrel of the telescope. And, you know, th sure, that could really wipe out your sensors. Or just simply by s shining on the structure, it will cause it to expand and that will ruin the uh, alignment and the focusing. So, yeah, those are coarse sensors that trigger if the sun gets too close. There's a set of fixed head star trackers. I believe there's three of these with different orientations. These are small telescopes that look for stars in their field of view. The field of view is about eight degrees by, uh, by eight degrees, and they're just looking for patterns of known stars that they can use as reference points, and the computer will figure this out. Now, not all of these can be used simultaneously because it's likely that one of them might be pointing at the Earth, or one of them might be pointing at the Sun, or the Moon, or some other bright object. When they finally get the telescope pointed very close to the target, there are uh, fine guidance sensors. And these are star trackers again, but they are able to track down to like milli arc second precision, micro arc second precision even. I mean, they're, they're the ones that hold the space telescope exactly at the target in question. So assuming you can get the telescope to point at the target, the fine trackers are going to be your main uh, source of data to make sure that you're keeping it pointed correctly. And so, yeah, astronomers have, in fact, planned for this situation. Actually, they've done more than planned. They've actually experienced this situation. Back in November 1999, the telescope was again on three gyros and it lost one, leaving it with two. And in this case, they just shut it down for about a month and a half because they had already scheduled a space shuttle servicing mission. And uh, yeah, for Christmas 1999, the Hubble Space Telescope got a new set of gyroscopes and other pieces of hardware to keep it operating. Now, Hubble was serviced five times since its original launch, making it unique among robotic space hardware. The last servicing mission was in 2009, and they replaced basically everything that might break, again, leaving it with six working gyroscopes. And in the last nine years, Four of those have finally broken, bringing us to today. 
Since 1999, new procedures have been developed that will allow the pointing of the telescope using only one or two gyroscopes. Relying on more on the star trackers, the magnetic sensors, and some carefully coordinated rotations, the Hubble Space Telescope will continue to operate. The downside is that retargeting from one uh, object to another might be a bit slower and the pointing accuracy might not be as great, but it's better than not having any telescope at all. And the brains behind this, they actually looked at it and they decided or they judged that operating on a single gyroscope wasn't that much worse than operating on two gyroscopes and would give them much longer potential lifetime. So if they do switch to a reduced gyroscope mode, they will immediately drop down to using just one gyroscope. Regardless, it is likely that observing plans that have been made will require some reorganization to account for the new behaviors. But science should continue for the foreseeable future. But on longer terms, you know, eventually both those gyroscopes will fail and even if they do survive, the telescope will continue following falling down and down and eventually it will get low enough that the tenuous upper atmosphere will uh, make pointing of the telescope impossible. The HST has been serviced in the past, but as of right now, there is no vehicle that can do what the space shuttle could do, so servicing isn't likely to happen. In fact, one of the tasks performed during the final servicing mission was to add grapple points that could be used by an autonomous spacecraft to grapple onto Hubble and deorbit it. Of course, with so many fans out there, there are always people talking about robotic servicing missions to let it continue to operate. And it's not out of the question that something like that might actually happen. Or, hey, if you have a big enough upper stage, why not put it on the same orbit as the uh, space station and have it service it? After all, they've got a robotic arm and astronauts. It would have to be a pretty big booster to switch, you know, fix the 30 odd degree inclination. But that would be a pretty cool mission. So for now, Hubble lives on. And with a bit of luck, we'll get a few more years of science out of it. And we'll see its 30th anniversary in space doing great science. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.